Time now for some debate winners and losers with our power panel. Let's bring in Fox News contributors Jessica Tarlov, Mark Thiessen, and Molly Hemingway. This is the trifecta of star power with us tonight to break this down. No pressure. Welcome to all of you. Okay, <laughs> left out, though, that you're I all hanging you're in You're with there. us in spirit, though. So why don't okay. we start with you, Jessica? We're going to go through the winners first of uh, that you, who you picked tonight in the debate that you thought had a good moment or two. These are all first-time winners for me and all polling very badly. <laughs> so Amy Klobuchar. Maybe that changes after tonight. I don't know. I don't know, but it could happen. Amy Klobuchar, Cory Booker, and Kamala Harris, I thought, had the strongest nights there. Um, Amy Klobuchar had some of the best lines beyond mm -hmm. raising $17,000 from ex-boyfriends ex for her Senate campaign. I thought she made a really pointed case for why she is the most electable, going back to her record and the number of purple and red districts that she's won. I think there's a bit of a race to occupy that second choice to Biden in the center lane, and that's what Pete Buttigieg was doing. And Amy Klobuchar kind of threw it down there and said, hey there, wait a minute, I'm the woman who's actually accomplished these things. And then she had the great shout out to Nancy Pelosi. Um, Cory Booker, I felt, was full of personality. He had some great lines, especially about marijuana at the end there with Joe Biden. I thought his personality just really radiated out of him. And Kamala Harris did what she did in July and then hasn't been able to since then. Um, obviously made up for hurt feelings with Tulsi Gabbard going after her mm -hmm. really hard. Um, and I think that also her focus on the importance of black women uh, to the Democratic Party was crucial there and highlighting the systemic challenges that they uh, face in American society was spot on and we owe a lot of our big election wins to black women and I love that she did that. Yeah, she's got to make that case. All the, Any of the contenders who want to get the nomination have got to yep. make that case. Okay, so um, Molly, to you, I mean, they seem more relaxed. It's a smaller group. You get a better chance to get a feel for them, but a lot of them, this is, you know, the fourth or fifth time they've done this. They did seem a little bit more at ease. It did seem a little relaxed. There were a lot of high points for various people, but you still got the feeling that maybe the eventual nominee was mm. not on the stage. So while I think I actually agree with Jessica on, on who she highlighted, and I think other people had a strong night, there were some good issues raised, um, I think the winner might be a candidate that has not yet been Hillary named. Clinton. Not missing <laughs> that one, but you never know. She has no, not no, no, ruled it is. out. Bloomberg, uh, Deval Deval Patrick. Patrick, Michelle Obama. I don't know. Well, we are getting this. Oprah. We are getting these in, these indications that there will be other people, including Deval Patrick, mm -hmm. who would have some strengths that are that are of the type that we were just talking about. Yeah, Mark. I think um, Bloomberg officially today now is in five states that he's mm -hmm. officially signed on to run, but um, he's not yet on the stage. I'm sure yeah. he'll get there quickly. Um, but what do you make of the folks we did see tonight? I th I mean, Biden won. It, 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 so also, I mean, here's why. Biden is the front runner and no one laid a glove on him. And he didn't have any gaffes. He didn't He didn't really stumble in any way. He actually, I think the two hour format versus the three hour format works in his favor because he don't get sundowners in the third hour, you know, but but uh, he had he had a good moment when he went after Warren with on Medicare for all. He said even majority of Democrats don't support yeah, Medicare for all. That was a good moment. Go. And he has the right strategy, which is uh, promote unity. He said, I, you know, he, he defended Trump, say, uh, indirectly Find defended Trump together. saying, you know, don't lock him up, Chance saying we need civility, we need to be able to work together. Mm. That's the right message. The problem is he's the wrong candidate because mm. he's so fragile. He's so, you know, we're, the fact that we're looking to see whether he could get through two hours, you know, this is not a guy who can go mano to mano with, mm. with, with Donald Trump in the fall. Okay, we don't have much time, but I want to quickly run you each through who you thought your loser was or who had a tough night. Um, we'll start with you, Jessica. I thought that everyone who really shouldn't be on the stage at this point, Tom Steyer, Tulsi Gabbard, Andrew Yang, who I find really adorable and had that great zinger about talking to Vladimir Putin, really shouldn't be there. I would like it to get down to the candidates who have a real chance at winning this race. And I feel like a lot of the voices kind of pulling in the mm. two, three, four, five percent area will be able to rise to the top. And I'd like to see Julian Castro back on that stage. I don't know why we need a Tom Steyer when uh, mm. Mayor Castro is available. Well, I will ask Tom uh, Steyer that when he is with us in just a short moment. Uh, Don't say that I said it, but <laughs> if he's watching. Okay, Molly and Mark, quickly. Well, I do losers. think also people were expecting a lot of people to go after Pete Buttigieg, yeah. and instead it was kind of interesting that a lot of people went after Tulsi Gabbard, mm -hmm. which has this Im indication of maybe punching down. Uh, Kamala Harris had a good night, as Jessica was talking about, but she went after Tulsi, and it didn't go particularly well for her, and Pete Buttigieg also had a 
little round that didn't go so well with him. Yeah, I mean, I, th I agree with him. on Pete Buttigieg. I think he was he was getting into fights with uh, with the the lesser animals of the forest, uh, which is you know never helpful when you're when you're sort of the close to the getting getting to front runner status. Um, but I think, quite frankly, everybody else was the loser because Joe Biden is the leader right now. And if you don't take out the if you, if you don't take out the leader of the pack, you're coming in second, and second right. place doesn't get to be president. Okay, power panel, if you <laughs> will stay where you are, because we want to get your winners and losers from today's impeachment hearings. That's next. Two of the House Democrats marathon impeachment hearings. Who were today's winners and losers? And honestly, people are watching the same thing and calling it two different ways. So let's bring in our power panel. Jessica, Mark, and Molly. Molly, we'll start with you. What did well, you make of it today? Today was a crazy day because it started out looking like it was an absolute disaster for Republicans. You had this prepared testimony from, from Sondland saying there was a quid pro quo. And then everything kind of completely crumbled under questioning from Republicans where he admitted that he didn't actually know of any quid pro quo. He kind of assumed it. Then I presumed, yeah. Um, and he didn't have any evidence to sort of support this central charge. This was the star witness for Democrats, and so it didn't go so well. So I think the loser might have been the media for over reacting to that initial testimony before it crumbled upon examination. Well, Jessica, tonight, though, they're sticking to the narrative, and Democrats are saying that this was a big win for them, and basically it's time to yep. get the articles drawn up and get this thing over with. Well, Ken Starr said it too, or he at least said that Adam Schiff would be moving on that quickly. Um, I certainly didn't think that Gordon Sondland's testimony got blown up under Republican questioning. Actually, my two losers of the day were Republican questioners, Devin Nunes and Castor, the Republican counsel. Rudy Giuliani, who has been right about very, very, very little um, in recent memory, was right when he tweeted today about how terrible Castor is at doing his job. And a number of Democrats were saying that he's essentially doing the work for us here. My mm -hmm. winners for the day, though, are everybody who has already testified before Gordon Sondland, who backed them up and also confirmed how important it is that we honor those who serve our country in the Foreign Service, like Bill Taylor, uh, Marie Ivanovich. And I think that's a very important message to be sending as Trump and his allies continue to slander people like Lieutenant Colonel Vindman calling to question uh, things like dual loyalty to the Ukraine and such. It's repulsive behavior. Um, so that's why the, the winners are everyone who has testified in told the truth about this president's quid pro quo with Ukraine. Okay, and Mark, it seems like the, the Republican questioners have tried to be very careful in being respectful, uh, you know, almost starting all of their questions with thank you for your service, thank for you for what you've done. But quickly wrap up for us today, yeah, what you make of it. The president hasn't exactly done that in his tweets. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for your service, Maria Ivanovich. You've left every place you've been uh, worse than you found Somalia it. And, uh, and you know, but look, I mean, here's uh, the, the reality is the Democrats have an ordinance problem, which is that their bombshells aren't exploding. Uh, the, the, every bombshell that we thought we were going to have, you know, Marie Ivanovich's testimony, he treated her badly. Okay, being a jerk is not an impeachable offense. Uh, the, the, the overheard phone call, you know, okay, let's say they overheard a phone call. There's literally nothing in that phone call that's different than the transcript where the president himself said uh, that I asked, asked the president of Ukraine to, to do the investigation. So there's nothing new in that bombshell. This is, this is the, you know, the Democrats have the burden of proof because right now uh, the polls show that most Americans think Donald Trump did something wrong, and I think they're right, but they don't think Trump should be removed from office. So in blackjack, tie goes to the dealer. In mm -hmm. impeachment, tie goes to the president. All right, and with that, Mark, we'll let you wrap it up. And Molly and Jessica, thank you all very much for weighing in on the two big stories of the day. Fox News Tonight's special live extended coverage of the fifth Democratic primary debate continues. We're on for another hour live next.